All right, good morning, everybody. We're gonna be in the garage today because it's raining outside with the ZL1 and I've got some goodies in store. All right, so after doing quite a bit of research on throttle bodies that you can do without having a tune, and there are several different companies, and actually the two that caught my eye the most were two that were right here in the state that I live in of Alabama. Uh, one in Pelham, I believe, and the other one is in Daphne. Uh, actually, Pelham is a little, a little closer to where I am than the one in Daphne. Uh, Red Dragon Performance is one that is in Pelham. They're not very big in the game, uh, but he is making, you know, good improvements to the throttle body. He's porting and polishing it, uh, just like anybody else would. Uh, but the Solar Performance in Daphne, Alabama, when I was talking back and forth with the owners of these companies, uh, the representative I was talking to from Solar actually seemed to understand the dynamics of the throttle body and airflow dynamics more than anyone else that I spoke to. So that is who I chose, is Solar Performance. They're kind of new still. Uh, you can't really find a lot of information, a lot of videos out here on YouTubes about them, but I'm about to compare the stock throttle body to the solar performance throttle body for the LT4 supercharged platform. Now, the reason I went with a ported stock instead of the 95 millimeter ported is because I do not plan on tuning anytime real soon. It will eventually happen, but not right now. Uh, I just want really to get rid of the dead spot in the throttle right off of idle for this uh, manual transmission car. It, it's kind of aggravating for the way that I drive a manual transmission. Uh, I've kind of learned to cope around it, but when I first got the car, I felt like I was brand new at driving a manual transmission again because it kept wanting to die on me. But anyway, let's get to what you have to do to change out the throttle body. All right, I'm not gonna take all this stuff off. Uh, I know it's pretty simple to take off, but I'm just gonna take off the hose here, take off the clamp right here, Clamp right here, take this duck out, take the four bolts out, there's two up here, two down towards the bottom. That one looks like it might be fun to get to. This right here, hose clamp's gonna have to come off. And the way to get this off, you just squeeze down on it. And pull. There we go. Don't yank, but you see when you squeeze this top portion, it kind of lines this up so it can come out. So don't squeeze both sides. So it's recessed in on this side. Squeeze only the back side of it. Pull gently, it's got a rubber seal on it. It will come out, you don't have to yank it. Then we'll move on to the other clamp. All right, here we have it, have it is Fairly simple to get off, straightforward. Uh, one thing I do want to say, if you don't have one of these 5 sixteenths little drivers, nut drivers here, go out and get you one. For these clamps that are all most of these intakes, I mean, it works great. So moving on, take, you got one bolt right there, here, here, and over here. It's got a, a O-ring gasket on it. So we'll go ahead and pop this bad boy off and we'll start looking it over and comparing it to the solar performance unit. Also, just so you know, 10 millimeter socket, that's what fits it. That's what I'm using on it. All right, so anybody that's new to the channel, I try to give tips and tricks that others may not give in their videos and I try to show more detail. It makes the video longer, probably not as entertaining, but you get valuable information. Um, when I'm loosening any anything like this, it's got four bolts on it, okay? I'm not just gonna loosen up the top and the bottom. I'm gonna crack this one loose, crack this one loose, crack this one loose, crack that. I always work in a pattern. And if you look at any torque specification of any manufacturer of anything that has bolts on opposite sides like this, that's how it's gonna want you to torque stuff down. So that's how I do it. I would also recommend you getting an extension Put on here and then this pain in the butt bolt back here get it first 
Go ahead and get it. Once you've got everything loose and the throttle body's loose, see how it's moving right here? So everything's loose. Get this pain in the butt one first. Get it all the way out. All right, so I've got the first pain in the butt bolt out. The next one I'm gonna take all the way out is this one because you don't wanna drop those. And they're down there, it's hard to get your fingers in there. So you don't wanna drop these bolts and be having to look for it for an hour or two. So get those two bottom ones first. Uh, then the next thing, once I get this off, uh, to be able to show you better on the video, I'll show you how these clips work right here. All right, so for this right here, the clamps are pretty simple, the way this one works. Uh, you always mess with something you gotta push down, something you gotta push down and slide. This one, you just put your thumb right here slide that gray piece up see that's down slide the gray piece up once you get the gray piece slid up you'll be able to depress this gray piece and pull gently and it unplugs the throttle body okay so a lot of people already know the problems with this factory throttle body unit uh they talk about this a pretty substantial lift right here <laughs> a huge lip around the top uh, you've got the nuts and stuff protruding screws protruding all this stuff interrupts airflow now get this one off and set it over here and we can get to the solar performance unit take a look at it and then compare the two together but let's see if I can turn my light on here inside of the supercharger unit itself. In case anybody was wondering exactly what in the world that looks like, stock form. There's your O-ring gasket around the throttle body. So the people that get it bored out to 103 millimeter, it does away with this O-ring gasket and you wind up having to RTV glue on your uh, throttle body. I don't know if I'm gonna go that far. I might stop at just the ported 95 uh, and then get the supercharger itself ported, the snout and the supercharger. So um, anyway, that's the way the inside of that bad boy looks. Let's move on to the throttle body. It's what you tuned into this video for. Oh, I see you. I see you coming with my throttle body. Well, we have some decent packaging here. Post lady just dropped off my uh, throttle body so we're gonna go ahead and pop this bad boy open i'm gonna open it upside down because i don't want everybody to see my address all right get into this dog on package here again pretty nicely packaged and let's see Pop information what do i have ECM learning of your throttle body. Uh, some good paperwork here on what to do. I'll kind of go over some of this with you. Instructions on how to replace throttle body. I'll we'll need that. Mm -hmm. Nice. They have their own tape. Oh my. Mm. Got a business card in. Man, this thing looks freaking awesome. Let's see if I can get this adjusted. Come on, camera. Can you see? <laughs> they engraved ZL1 into the bottom of this throttle body. Look at the blade. Solar Performance, it's got their logo on the blade. Look down there at the bottom. 
It's got ZL1 engraved in it. Get the fuck out of here. What a difference. I mean, this is super smooth. Pretty much done away with the lip. They've smoothed it out so it's not a hard lip anymore. It's almost gone. Well, it is gone right there. And then it progressively goes around as a blend. Look at the difference in this lip. I mean, that's a huge lip right there. I don't know if you can clearly see it. Compared, even at the widest spot, it's a lot smaller. Now, these are CNC machine. The throttle blade also, you've got screws that are flush. Look at that. Alabama, USA, ZL1 Solar Performance. I mean, this thing's a work of freaking art. I have my big fat fingerprint on it. Nothing protrudes out the back. They've taken the throttle arm here and machined it down. This thing is, just looks amazing. Now I did purchase a uh, throttle body from somebody and I sent them, so this is a stock reworked throttle body. So this is the factory throttle body just been reworked. And this thing is freaking awesome. All right, let's get this bad boy on the car. Also, we'll go over this. Uh, they're pretty extensive. You wanna make sure that you follow these instructions as closely as possible. You don't wanna check engine lights or anything like that because this bad boy is gonna flow a good amount of air more than the factory unit at part throttle and right off of idle. So you want to make sure that the ECM can learn this new throttle body, or you can take the dealership and let them do a throttle relearn if you want to pay for that and let them know that you got an aftermarket modified throttle body. But I'm going to do the learn procedure and get it, you know, learned in. I'm not going to be able to do any, you know, drastic change in throttle. It says, you know, you don't want to just install this thing, go out there and floor it because it may send it in the limp mode because it's getting a lot more air than what it's been getting and what it's used to. So you have to let it learn that, hey, I'm getting a lot more air and let it adjust the fuel and the timing curve accordingly. I want to kind of go over, uh, do I put it back on? It's pretty much exact opposite of how I took it off. Took the top one in first to, you know, kind of hold it in place. You can do these with your fingers. For these other two, use your extension just like this. Get the bolt in there, use your socket, and which my extension is a little longer than what you know I would want it to be, but get it started up in there. Then get them all finger tight. Once you get them all finger tight using just the socket, then you can go back and just touch them with a, a ratchet. Use a small ratchet. They don't have to be super tight. They just barely have to be tight at all, really, because it's got this O-ring gasket. So don't go wrenching down on these bolts. It's got an O-ring on it. That's what the O-ring's for, is to seal it up. So it does not have to be super tight, or really even, in some people's opinion, tight at all. It's probably like 80 inch pounds or something, or less, on these bolts. So don't over tighten them. Use and for this clip right here, you just line it up, push it in, and then push the gray part back in make sure it's snug oh that's good then we'll put the elbow back on don't forget this tube right here when you put the elbow back on next step join me here in the trunk on the passenger side you got this pull out panel ah it's got stuff all around it there we have the battery so 10 millimeter just loosen up this bolt right here if I can get this camera to focus a little bit better on it a little looser than that all right and pull that off now we're going to leave that off for just a few minutes uh, then put it back on once I put the negative battery terminal back on, tighten it back up with the 10 millimeter bolt or wrench there, pop this bad boy back in place. It's really a pain in the butt because you've got, you know, little pieces that tuck in behind on every portion of it. Once we do that, that's the first step. We'll walk over here, 
All right, they give you some pretty extensive instructions here. So I'll just film this for a second. Feel free to pause. Next page. All right, so basically what it says is that you can do an ECM reset and learning routine uh, consists of overnight power down of ECM by disconnecting a battery for several hours, followed by the steps below. Disconnect the negative battery terminal in black located under the matte carpet. We just did that. Um, then it says that you can actually skip and go just doing the red portions. So that's negative battery terminal, and then allow the engine to idle for three minutes while monitoring idle process. Turn the engine off. Then start the engine again, allow to idle for three additional minutes and until the temperature is at or above 180. Uh, then you accelerate slowly. This is parked up to 4,000 RPM. Uh, remove your foot from the accelerator pedal. Uh, they should decrease, RPM should decrease without interruptions. Then uh, turn the engine off for one minute. Then drive normally at or above 44 miles per hour, allow the vehicle to decelerate and ex accelerate. And it says right here at the bottom, uh, it doesn't matter if you're in eco touring mode or whatever. Avoid high rates of change of throttle or revving up to 6,500 6, RPM is okay if done progressively. That seems like it's okay after you've done the idling and drove at 44 miles an hour and allowed the car to accelerate and decelerate smoothly. Uh, that way it has time to learn this new throttle body. So don't just slap this on, crank it up. Let the car warm up and take out there and start doing wide open throttle pulls in it, okay? So connected, check all this, make sure that's connected. This clamp's tight, this clamp's tight, these bolts are good. Let's go crank this. All right, as you can see, I raised my garage door up just a little bit. Go ahead and hold my start button without pressing the clutch or the brake. Let everything cut on. in my clutch, my brake. Radio settings are good. I probably left this undone for about five to seven minutes. Not very long, but in my opinion, long enough. They just said disconnect and reconnect it. So, heck, it seems like it's not idling much higher than what it was beforehand. But this is a cold start, so it's going to idle a little bit. So, there she is. She's running. I'm going to go do the the idle procedure, uh, as they stated in the instructions that I showed a moment ago, I'm gonna go do the driving procedures. Uh, I need to get something to eat because I'm hungry as hell. It's 11.16, I gotta go to work at two o'clock today. So anyway, there's the installation and the comparison of the solar performance on a Daphne Alabama throttle body. Beautiful throttle body. The way they engraved the plate, I know nobody's gonna see it inside, but I see it and it's pretty awesome. It's just a fine touch there. The engraving of Z01 on the plate uh, looks great. Uh, if you're looking for a good throttle body, shout out to them. They did a lot of research. They're, they're not just somebody with a CNC machine. They, they have actual engineers working for them down there. And it's 
it's an amazing job they're doing. Uh, I may take the other throttle body in Red Dragon Performance right here in uh, Central Alabama. I may take it to them and let them do their port job and then compare the two between them and Solar Performance. Um, as far as driving impressions and stuff like that, that video is going to be coming in a few weeks once I've it's had full enough time to learn and I get used to driving with it. So stay tuned for that video and other videos. I've got some other, you know, little light, you know, visual modifications and stuff like that, like exterior stuff, light tint, whatnot, uh, coming. So also I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do for exhaust. Uh, I found a crimp delete for the crimped off pipe in the back. I'm not a convertible, so I do not need that pipe being crimped. And for about 130 or 150 bucks, they sell a kit, you can cut that out and then clamp on a uh, piece of, uh, I believe it's 2.75 inch or three inch piping in its place. Open that up just because it will make me feel better. So anyhow, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. The only reason I do these videos for each and every one of you guys. So thanks, stay tuned for more.